The kin that you have, the jealousy you have, is that that gets you closer to Hashem and triggers you to work harder on your learning, on your Maisa Chesed, on your Avud Hashem, on Yiras Hashem. Wherever you get your podcasts from, or our own website, prismoftorah.com. This is the Prism of Torah with Rabbi Saf Aaron Prisman. This week, Parshas Vayeshev. What are you jealous of? Shalom to everyone. In this week's Parsha Parshas Vayeshev, I would like to share with you an incredible vote by the Beis Alevi. I'll try to add to it a bit. You know, Hashem and connect it to Hanukkah. So it all starts like this. We all know there are two dreams that Yosef had. Dream number one was that he's in the field with his brothers and they're all gathering together bundles of wheat and all their bundles are bowing down to his bundle of wheat. The reaction of the brothers to that was, what, you think you're gonna, we're going to be dependent on you? You're going to rule over us? And the Torah says that they continued to hate him. That's the adjective used. They continued to hate him. As opposed to the second dream, it says right after that he dreamt another dream and he told it to his brothers, that it says that the sun and the moon and 11 stars were all bowing down to him. So are the two dreams. The Beis Levi asks, Oh, coming from his Shtikol uh, Torah, there are two main questions. Both are in reference to the distinction and the differences between the two dreams. Question number one. In dream one, it wasn't Yosef himself or someone representing Yosef and someone representing the brothers, but rather it's some other object of theirs. It's the bundle of wheat. Their bundles are bowing down to his bundle. Not, no one's bowing down to him directly. And they're not really bowing down directly themselves. It's rather their bundles of wheat. Why is it that that's how it is in the first dream? Whereas in the second dream, it sounds like the figures are representing Yosef and his brothers. Because he, it says he was literally in the middle. And everyone was around him. And the sun and the moon and all the stars, the 11 stars, are bowing down to him. So this, the, the stars are representing the brothers, and we know that, and he was in the middle. So everything's representing them directly. It's not something of theirs, but rather them themselves. Why is there a chiluk? What's the difference? Why is dream number one speaking about an object that they own or that's theirs, but not it doesn't represent the, the, the people themselves, i.e. Yosef versus his brothers. Whereas in the second dream, the star is representing the brothers. And indeed, Yosef, nothing's even representing him. It's him himself in the dream. What's the difference? That's question number one. Question number two, it's interesting that the way the Torah describes the reaction of the brothers is totally different. In dream number one, the reaction is that they hated him for it, and they continued to hate him even more. Whereas the reaction for dream number two, it doesn't even say the word hate. Rather, it says that the brothers were jealous of him. Why is there a different reaction to dream number one as opposed to dream number two? And the answer, says the Beis Alevi, is a very fundamental yesoid that we have to try to live by. And that is, dream number one, the reason it was Bedafka represented by something else, but not the figures themselves, i.e. their bundles of wheat, because that dream was saying that they're going to be dependent on Yosef for food. And therefore, it's not them themselves. Just Yosef will have a lot of money and he'll be able to give them. So they will be dependent on him. But it's something monetary. It's not that he is better than them, but rather they will be dependent on him. Whereas dream number two was saying something way more deeper than that. Dream number one, it was external to them. And that's why it's being represented by not the figures themselves, 
but something they possess or something they have, the bundles of wheat, which represents parnasa, food, money. They're going to be dependent on Yosef. So there's no reason to be jealous for such a thing. Zot the Beis Alevi, it's just like the saying, I guess, in those days was that just because he has more money than me, he's rich, I'm poor, I'm not going to be embarrassed by that. Yes, my wallet should be embarrassed by his wallet, but I'm not going to be embarrassed by him because it's totally external to the person. Really, Be'etzim, in essence, who said that the rich person is better than the poor person? And therefore, there's no room to be jealous. And the reason they, they continue to hate him, because what, he thinks we're going to be dependent on him for money? Who does he think he is? As opposed to the second dream, when we know there's truth to dreams, and as the Gemara says, and the dream represented the idea that he himself was better than them, because he's in the middle and they're all bowing down to him, that already bothered them. That triggered a jealousy. Because they said to themselves, whoa, so maybe he is better than us. Maybe, maybe he has more toira, more maisim toivim, more mitzvahs. And that bothers them already. And that is a good reason to be jealous. As we know, Rabbi Niyoyna tells us, based on also Rabbi Nuyin and Shari Tshuva and also in Pirkei Avris, that there's different types of jealousies. And we know the good jealousy is Kinat Soifrim Tar Bechokma. As the Beis Halevi brings down, it says in the Pasuk, Al Yekane Libcha Bechatayin, don't be jealous of other people's sins. Kim Biras Hashem, the only thing that's healthy to be jealous of is the amount of fear of Hashem the other person has, which obviously leads to doing more Torah and mitzvahs and growing spiritually. That is what we know life is all about. And that really bothered them, because they said, why, why, why are we not on his level? Why can't we reach that level? Why through the dream do we see that his, he is on a higher level than us? That bothered them, and that triggered them to be jealous of him. As the Beis Halevi says, that's the positive, a good type of jealousy. Rabbi Niyana goes down to explain. The worst jealousy you can have, Ad Kedekach, that Rabbi Niyana calls him Hasoyne Hashem, someone that hates HaKadosh Baruch Hu Chas V'Shalom. And that is a person that it just can't take it when some other Jew out there is doing good. He's doing mitzvahs, chesed, getting closer to Hashem. That bothers him. A person like that is a soin Hashem because if you love the king and you see there, the king has amazing slaves, you should be happy for him. You should be happy for a Kodesh Buchu. He has, oh, a Shreichim Yisrael, that you have, we, uh, that a Kodesh Buchu, that's incredible that we have such people in our nation. But a person that doesn't feel that and rather is upset when someone else does good spiritually, that's a horrible thing. That's soin Hashem. That's what Rabbi Lachan Vassalman says. That's Ruch Amalek Bekirbeinu. That's Mamish, what Amalek stands for. Amalek was willing to do anything they can against all logic just to try to reduce the amount of Ira Hashem there is in the world. Even Zok the Rabbein even when a person, he doesn't really care so much how the other person does as long as he doesn't do better than himself. That's also Soine Hashem, Rabbein Yoyna says. But over here with the brothers, we're talking about a positive kina, a kina that can trigger you to do better. You see, whoa, if my friend can do so good, why can't I? And of course, you can't expect yourself to be the same like the other person because everyone has different tools, but you can do the best you can, just like it seems like he's doing well. Hashem judges us based on our tools, based on our environment, as we know, etc., etc., but the name of the game is how to grow spiritually to get closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And if the kin that you have, the jealousy you have, is that that gets you closer to Hashem and triggers you to work harder on your learning, on your Maisa Chesed, on your Avodah Hashem, on your Yiras Hashem, that's a good, that's a good kinah. That's what uh, the Beis Halevi says. The brothers were Mekanahim because they realized, well, if he's in the middle and we're bowing down to him, it, it's a Gilui. It reveals to us that he's on a higher level than us spiritually. And that is precisely why Zok the Beis Halevi, that their reaction was that of jealousy. The good jealousy, the healthy jealousy. It's interesting that in Kohelis, Perik Dalid, Pasuk Dalid, 
Shlomo Amelech also talks about how jealousy in many ways can be the engine to get a person to do a lot of good things. Even on that he says it's hevel ruach, but he says, It's jealousy that gets a person going to do things. And the good jealousy is the one that gets us to get closer to HaKadosh Buhu. As they say, when it comes to spirituality, you should look up. Wow, look at these people, how spiritual they are, how they worked on themselves. I also want to be like that. When it comes to Gashmis, physical things, then you should look down. Look how people have less than me. Wow, I have so much. Because you should be Sameach Bechel Kecha, happy with what you have from a Gashmis perspective. Huchnis, you always want to try to grow. Because at the end of the day, as we all know, that is the name of the game. That's what HaKadosh Bu- Why? As Mesil Sishon tells us over and over again, that is why HaKadosh Buhu put us here. It's a prozdo. It's a hallway to Elam Abba. So let's use it for the right reasons. Let's work on ourselves. Grow. And like David HaMelech says, which is even a higher level than needing jealousy to help you reach higher places, getting close to HaKadosh Buhu. He says, L'asot retzoncha Hashem chafatzti. Your motivation is, your inner motivation to want to be close to HaKadosh Buhu, to do Ratzon Hashem. Kirva selokim litov. It's good for me to be close to Hashem. Again, that's the whole situation Hashem created for us, an optical illusion in this world. So that won't be obvious who's running the world, even though we know it's obvious and we should work on ourselves. But the situation was created as such so that we'll have room for freedom of choice. Every time we make the right choice, everything is... Not in our hands, except for choosing good over bad, right over wrong. A similar idea we see in last week's parsha, Parashas Vaishlach, where Rachel was seeing that her that Leah was having kids, her sister was having kids, and she had no kids. So, she, so the pasuk says she was jealous because Leah had kids. Parashi. Is not willing to explain it literally that she was jealous because Leah didn't have kids. Because Leah had kids and Rachel didn't have kids. No. Rather, Rashi over there says the reason was she was jealous because the fact that Leah deserved to have kids and she didn't, that is a gilui. It reveals that she wasn't on the level of Leah with her mycin, her good deeds, her iras Hashem. And that bothered her because it was so obvious to Rashi and Chazal that there's no way People on such a, the Imaos, Doishois, Rochel, there's no way she would be jealous just of the fact she had kids. She had to, it must be something spiritual. It reveals to her, wow, why didn't I deserve kids? It must be that I'm not on the level that my sister is. Why not? And that jealousy caused her to work on herself. The same idea, we see the Beis Levi is explaining what bothered the, 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 the Shvatim, the, the brothers of Yosef. So we answered exactly why there are two differences between the two dreams. Difference number one, that the dream number one didn't represent the brothers directly and Yosef directly, but rather their bundles of wheat, because it was implying that they'll be dependent on Yosef from a parnasa, from from, from money perspective. Which indeed happened later on, because they were dependent on him for to come down when they, there's no food where they were, and they had to come back down to Mitzrayim and, and beg Yosef for food. And that's why also, as a result of that dream, they they continued to hate him because what you think we're going to be dependent on you for food, we're going to be dependent on you for for Gashmis reasons. So they hated him, but they weren't jealous. What is it to be jealous? If he's rich and I'm poor, I should be jealous of that. Who cares? Everyone gets the tools to do their avlida in this world. Whereas the second dream, Zok the Beis Alevi, over the air, was implying was something ruchani, because who are you? You are based on your soul, where you're holding spiritually. That is what life is all about, and that's what you're, that is what we're being judged on. And that bothered them, because that dream was screaming out that all the stars around Yosef, which we know the stars are... Or, or, or what HaKadosh Buhu put in motion to be affecting the world, but who really affects the core of the world? Tzadik Yesoid Oilam, the 
The whole infrastructure of the world all gets triggered by the tzaddikim. So it implied that Yosef was the tzaddik and they weren't on the level of tzitkas that he was on. And that was a gilu to them, they weren't on his level. And that was a true reason to become jealous. One of my rabbeim of Kamenetz Shlita always said, if you look carefully around you in the world, it's pretty obvious that Kaddish Buh who set up this place for us to have room to grow spiritually. Because if you see the difference between people on the level of Gashmias, take for instance, he always said, a hundred meter race. What's already the difference between the fastest person and the slowest person? But in spirituality, there's no end. And also you can continue growing over and over. And there's no end to it. The range is almost infinite. And that's why it's evident that this world was set up for us to grow spiritually. We have to keep that in mind. Especially now going into Hanukkah, Hanukkah, the Levush, which is brought down by the Mishnah Burah, clearly tells us that Hanukkah was about, all about fighting for our spiritual right. The going, they didn't care if we, they didn't care they, if we were alive or not. They didn't want to actually kill us. They just wanted to make sure that we didn't, we weren't spiritual people. They tried to stop the most holiest mitzvahs we had, Brismila, Shabbos, they didn't want us to do any of these mitzvahs. They want, and they said, if you stop doing the mitzvahs and you become like us, we won't kill you. And Dafka and that, we were fighting against that because we realized what life is all about. And therefore also, the celebration of Hanukkah, says the Levush, is also in spirituality. And there's no mitzvah per se to to make a Suda on Hanukkah like there is in Purim. As opposed to Purim, there is an Indian to do Gashmias Mitzvahs as well. Because the Goyim wanted to get rid of us physically. They didn't care if we'd stop being religious or not, or spiritual. All they cared is about the getting rid of us, even in Gashmias, to get rid of our bodies. And that's why we have also Mitzvahs with our Guf. And hence, what we're saying today is very relevant to Hanukkah. Hanukkah is a time we can realize, recalibrate ourselves, what life is all about. It's all about spirituality. That's what we fought for, and that's what we should stand for, and that's what we should realize and be focused through our life. That is what life is all about, and we want to grow closer to you, Hashem. Everything else should be just a tool to help us get there. Even the good jealousy, it should be a jealousy that we use because we want to get better. Not that we're not happy the other person is doing well. Quite the contrary, we should be happy he's doing well, but we want to leverage off of that and also get closer to Hashem's spirituality from a spiritual perspective. There's a famous story I said several times when someone came very frightened to of Steinman's Zetzal and he told him a very word, I bought a very fancy car and I'm starting to think people look at me, there's going to be Ayn Ara over here, I, I don't know what to do. So he said, well, what did you learn all of Shas? He goes, no. Did you learn half of Shas? He goes, no. Did you learn one Masechet that you know really well? He goes, not really. He goes, so what are you worried about? You can buy any car you want. That is not what life is all about. Why should someone be jealous of you? Because as we know, being jealous can be of spiritual reasons. But being jealous of a car? Who cares? Like the saying the Beis Halevi says in those days, why should my car be embarrassed? My car should be embarrassed of your car, but why should I be embarrassed of you? Because you have a better car than me. It has no shaykhs to what we really represent and who we are. You know, it's will be zoiche to go into the Seilige Hanukkah realizing that the essence of life is to grow in spirituality and ruchnis. Have a good Shabbos and a freilich in Hanukkah. <coughs> Thank you for joining us. This is the Prism of Torah. Visit our website prismofterra.com where you'll find a full archive of hundreds of past every Torah. Subscribe to the podcast, leave us a review, and don't forget to share with your friends and family. Sponsorship opportunities are available for all of our episodes. Thank you, Yonavefa, for your recording equipment. Produced by Ellie Podcast Productions.